Watch one four with expansion board, be it expansion board two or expansion board one with the first relay, which we name relay one. We have supply from the watch one four coming directly from the battery at 48 volts, and we've got a 12 volt fan. This 12 volt fan needs to have supply provided by 12 volts. For this scenario, we're going to use a 12 volt plug pack and we'll provide the power. So we've pre wired this for you in this scenario. So we provide 12 volts from the plug pack. That then feeds into relay one. So the 12 volts comes through into relay one. That switches on and off, depending on whether the fan is required. And that then feeds out and down into the fan. So this is the standard fan that you find on a computer. And that feeds the positive power. We then grab the negative from the fan and that returns all the way back to the plug pack. That handles the 12 volt system. And yet we've still got 48 volts supplying the Watchmon 4 directly from the battery pack. Now let's look at the software. For software, we go into hardware. We find our way across to the expansion board. And we're looking at relay one here, which is the first position. So let's just go edit and grab the relay one and manually force it on. And this is always a good practice when you're first wiring everything up to make sure it's working. And what you can see there, is that the fan is running okay so now that the plug pack is switched on the fan is running let's now go back to the software and man manually turn it off so it's forced off and you can see that it goes off and it's always important when you're doing this testing phase that you verify that the functions actually work before you actually add the control so let's now add the control to the system so in this case, we go edit, we pick relay one, and in this case, we're going to pick cooling required and save. Now at the moment, the battery is happy and it's not balancing. So let's now have a look at where that control is actually being triggered from. So in this case, we go to control and then we move across to thermal. And in thermal, we go edit and we've got control on auto where if the temperature of the cells currently at 17 go above 42 degrees, the fan will turn on. If the ambient temperature sensor that's from the Watchmon 4 itself goes over 47, currently showing 27, it would then turn the fan on. Or in this case, we've got a third option that if the cells go into bypass at all with any current, it will turn the fan on. Okay, so let's now go and change the default value, currently 17 degrees. Let's now change that to 16 degrees, saying that the target is 16, the actual is 17. So in theory, it needs to turn the fan on. So in this case, it has a stop time of 60 seconds and a restart time of 30 seconds. So in about 30 seconds, the software is showing that it's about to transition to on. It will actually start the fan and it will see that it comes on. So let's just watch the fan. Okay, we'll now go back to the software and change the settings again from where it was 16 degrees back to 42 degrees or the setting that you choose that you feel is appropriate. So let's press save. And in this case, the software again is going to transition where it's currently 17 degrees, which is below 42 degrees and saying, well, it's probably time to turn off. It stays running for about a minute. And after that period of time is elapsed, if the conditions are still met, it will then turn the fan off. And that's so that the system, when it's going into bypass, if they're balancing the heat resistors and you've got a fan on the input and the output of the battery, that's able to cool those down. And when the balancing is finished, it then turns it off. Well, we can see the red LED is on with relay one, and now it's turned off, as has the fan turned off. For this scenario, we're going to take the Watchmon 4 that's currently powered from a battery pack at 48 volts and demonstrate switching it on and off with a solid state relay. So we've added this to expansion board two, and this replaces relay three. So we have solid state relays at position three, known as relay three, and position four, relay four. 
So these are treated very much the same as a mechanical relay. In this case, with the 12 volt fan, we're going to provide power to it with a 12 volt plug pack, which is quite independent of the 48 volt battery supply. So let's plug in this 12 volt plug pack. Okay, we're gonna plug it into the barrel and add it to the system. What you'll see there is we've provided no power to the input of the expansion board because the powering of this comes through the circuit itself. The solid state relays are fully isolated from the battery pack. So let's now have a look at what we're going to do in software. So in this case, we're going to go menu to the hardware. We'll move across to the expansion board. In this case, we're going to move down to relay three and we will turn it manually on. Doing so, when we press save, we expect to see the fan come on. So let's have a look at that. So I'm pressing save now, and we can see the fan come on. And we always do this when we wire things up, just to make sure that your circuit is working properly before you add control to it. We now have the solid state relay with the light switched on, and the fan is running. Just as important, we also wanna make sure that we can switch it off. So let's now go back to the software and where it's currently showing is manually on for Relay 3, we now turn it to off by saying none and press save. We'll see that the light has gone off in the software. We can see the light here has gone off on the expansion board and the fan is now turned off. That tells us that this circuit is connected properly. Now let's have a look at the control that we want to actually implement for Relay 3. So first we go into the expansion board and we change it from none to cooling required and we press save, and that now allows that function to follow the control rule. In this scenario, we're going to use the Watch One 4 to control a 12 volt fan, but with the MOSFETs from the expansion board. So the MOSFET will have power fed into them through the expansion board and then fed the power straight back out. And that's what we've prepared here with this particular scenario. So let's pull out the terminal block and plug it in. And just to go through the scenario carefully, what we're going to do here is provide power into the expansion board. We have nothing connected to the relays because it's got nothing to do with it. And then the power comes back out here through output five in this scenario. Our 12 volt fan we're going to plug in. We need to provide 12 volts to this fan. So we're going to use a 12 volt plug pack. So let's plug that in and connect it up. Now this same scenario, which is on a expansion board two, can also be done on an expansion board one, where we also have output five as well. So it's exactly the same scenario. So let's now move across to the software in a minute. But what you can see here is we're providing 48 volt power from the battery, but we're providing 12 volt power into the expansion board to switch this fan. So let's move to the software. In this case, we go menu, down to hardware, across to the expansion board. And in this case, we are looking at output five as the example. So let's press edit and make sure we can see that the fan switches on. So in this case, we're going to turn it to manually on and see that the fan turns on. You can see that software is showing the light that it is and we can see that the fan is running. And this is now being controlled by the MOSFET. You can also see the light on the MOSFET showing that it's actually currently powered. Let's now confirm that we're able to turn it off by going edit and picking the manual on mode back to none. And press save. And that will activate. And that confirms that our wiring room is correct. We've got the fan. It's powered in so that both the positive and negative of the fan is fed through the MOSFET control board out of the expansion board. We've put a fuse in line for the expansion board. Anything that switches through the Watchmon or the expansion board, we limit to three amps. And that's why we've got a three amp fuse in line here. Now this concludes the demonstration of using a fan that is controlled by the MOSFET outputs via the expansion board. In this scenario, we're going to go through a Watch One 4 controlling a 12 volt fan. 
When we only have the Watch One 4 solo, which is it on its own without an expansion board, we're still able to switch the fan, in this case a 12 volt fan. We're still running a 48 volt battery pack, but what we're able to do here is we take the 48 volts from up here, we run that down to a DC to DC converter. This is a 48 volt to 12 volt DC to DC converter. 12 volt output and 48 volt input. So we're fusing from the battery down to the DC to DC converter and then taking from the DC to DC converter 12 volts into the supply here. So the yellow and fuse and black is feeding into here in supply. With the fan, we're able to connect the switched ground through to, in this case, output A, which is on the expansion board. And the positive is connected through to the same shared power supply. All right, let's now look at the software as to how we can control that. So in this case, we go menu and down to hardware. We move across to the expansion board. We're in the scenario of just the Watchmon. So let's now turn that fan on. So we go edit, control output A, and we go from none to manually on. So when I press save here, we'll see the fan switch on. And that is now controlling a 12 volt fan via 48 volt to a 12 volt DC to DC converter back off the battery. Let's now turn that off and change it to its normal control function, which for a fan is cooling required. But let's just go none first, make sure that it switches off. Okay, so let's recap. We have a 12 volt fan that is fed by a switched output here on the Watchmon 4 onboard output. We've got the 12 volt input here that's coming from this DC to DC. So as you can see here in the back, we have 12 volt output and 48 volt input. 